their brothers, their plumbers. Oh no! Leaky. They're on the trail Leaky. of a kidnapped princess <laughs> and a mystical meteorite. It's incredible! That gives anyone who possesses it oh. the, power the power to rule the universe. Get me the rock! Come and get it, lizard breath! Go. So we just jump right into it. <laughs> that was the worst intro ever. Uh, it, yeah, it's a me, Hat Man, and it's a me, a JJ. And today on the uh, JJ and Hatman podcast, we'll be discussing the Super Mario uh, Brothers movies, movies, uh, plural, because we'll be uh taking a tr- trip down memory lane to the 1996 was it 1994 something like 1993. that 93 1993 are they but... both just called the super mario brothers movie yeah and they're both actually officially nintendo licensed movies so right. if you if you're into the lore of mario um i think both of them are technically canon um i don't know how that works but this is one of the main things that i want to talk about which is how much of the Mario canon seems to contradict other aspects of it. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like both the fucking films have the same premise, like almost exactly the same. Um, the only difference is that, well, uh, yeah, I'm going to go back and say the difference is that in the, in the old one it, from 1993, apparently a race of... Uh, of humanoid creatures evolved from dinosaurs, right? Uh, yeah. So if we, if we, yeah, if we're going back, if we're going back to the start here, we've got to go back 65 million years. Yeah, where dinosaurs roamed the earth freely, uh, and they had societies and and things like that. <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> that was the noise of a roving dinosaur. That was the, <laughs> the noise of a roving triceratops. Wasn't it clear? Nick, well, parts of it cut out, so it was just. I mean, you'd have to listen back, but yeah. Keep, right, I'll, keep I'll, that I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try. It. I'm gonna try it again then. <laughs> What's even worse? I thought it just. <laughs> what noises do they? I feel like they made. They must have been like chicken noises. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've gotten to the making stupid noises part of the podcast, uh, particularly early today. Yeah, and yeah, apparently a meteor hit the earth and like plunge them into some alternate like dimension and this uh, a a fragment of that like remains and is carried around by one of the characters and it's the the key to the whole plot like it should just be called the MacGuffin, you know like they shouldn't (laughs) even bother they shouldn't even bother you know naming it anything beyond that you know even more so than the star in the in the contemporary movie the the 2023 movie yeah it's yeah it's just it's, it's not really explained it's not really you know, and you could argue maybe it doesn't have to be, but it's just, yeah, it's just the thing. You need to get the thing to, to <laughs> win the thing. You well, know, it's the thing. What I think is quite funny about the original movie is that they have no idea what the hell it is the whole time or how important it is, and they just kind of, like, let it go. Um, like, you either kind of just, like, give it up really easily uh, to one of the first people they encounter when once they uh, go into this uh, dimension. And then to spend a lot of time trying to get it back, and so yeah, it, it, both films just star two two Italian plumbers in in Brooklyn, right? I feel like the new film took a lot of um, inspiration from the old film. Uh, they go through a pipe, both of them go through like a pipe, and it it tel- teleports them to this other like reality uh, or dimension. Um, whereas in in Mario, it's like very you know it's very cartoony. There's some strange like creatures there um i'd say it say it still seems a bit dystopian in that you know you've got this big horrible bowser creature that's going around like just destroying whole like i don't know cities and 
areas just for this, uh, just for the star. Um, whereas the the nineteen ninety three one is just like some horrible, like place infested with, I don't know, it's like Mad Max or something. Um, it does have a bit of a Mad Max vibe to it. Yeah, it does. It's like it's a kind of gritty, sort of fantastical parody of of Manhattan, I guess. Is it called Dino Hatton? I I don't know. I can't remember. Um, yeah, it's just just really sort of weird. It's very closed in as well, like tunnels and very underground feeling. Um, maybe a little cyberpunk to it. Yeah, there is a bit of, bit of a cyberpunk vibe to it, yeah. Um, but it, I don't know, every, every, everyone just seems very strange there as well, just like, it's just very chaotic. <laughs> yes, everyone's just very strange. Like, so I'd seen this movie perhaps 25 years ago, and I remembered practically nothing of it. And you know what? I saw it this weekend and I still remember very little of it. It's like some <laughs> weird fucking fever dream, you know, but it is full of weird people and weird things. Like, like one of the things I do remember is, is Cooper uh, played by Dennis Hopper, just taking a, a bath in, in like mud, in like slime. Yeah. Slimy mud. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's just weird. It's something that I didn't remember at all is that Toad is this kind of, busker yeah he's just kind of like sort of slightly hippie-ish protest busker type thing and i feel like he gets introduced um and then within like i don't know 10 15 minutes he's turned into one of those horrendous goomba things right oh god yeah so so i gotta say the goombas probably win my vote for the worst effects or just like the worst costumes the worst adaptations of, of something to something else you know like just what the fuck are they that these you know they, they're these weirdly disproportionate sort of pinhead type dinosaur things with like big suits that look they look like they're you know like three midgets in a trench coat with a fucking <laughs> dinosaur puppet head on you know on top of something it's uh, um yeah i mean it's very fucking weird right the whole idea is that they've been de-evolved into uh something that is more closely uh resembling a dinosaur but it doesn't really it just looks like i don't know uh it doesn't look like anything it doesn't look like anything that anyone's conceived of i mean it looks vaguely dino-ish 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 dino-esque yeah but not really yeah, just... And they don't look at all at all like Gumbas because I mean to be fair the Gumbas in the video game don't really look like anything. Yeah, it's but, like they, but they look, but they look like themselves. They look kind of like little mushroom type things. They but they look like them. They look a bit like little turds. To be honest, I always thought <laughs> that they look a little bit like little turds that just sort of you know sort of waddle around on their little feet. Yeah, they're, um, they're very non-threatening they, they as look, well. They're quite non-threatening, yeah. And but they but they look. They look like themselves, do you know what I mean? Like they don't look like anything else. But yeah. they look very much like themselves. And the things that that portray the Gumbas in the movie look nothing like what they look like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just a horrendous creature. You you got to think like when that film was conceptualized, which I think involved a lot of drugs. Undoubtedly. Yeah, someone had some kind of, they must have had some kind of concept art. Or just like you know, something to say. This is what they're going to look like, and you know, everyone signed that off and said, "Yeah, that's fine. Like this makes perfect sense." Like <laughs> it's. I think they're probably the 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 thing that stands out as the weirdest thing about that movie. I mean, all of it's very weird. The the whole plot and and you know, Cooper being like a germaphobe and just everything about it is pretty weird. But when when I think of that movie, I always, you know, imagine those fucking things. That's what comes to my head first. <laughs> That's um, the first thing that pops in your head. Yeah. So for me, for me, it's it's Dennis Hopper in a bath of mud. And for <laughs> you, it's these, it's these weird Gumba fucking things with their little little heads smiling. They got they're always like smiling and looking <laughs> right really, happy. Creep, like a really creepy smile, isn't it? It's like a really sort of <laughs> creepy. Sort of, sort of dose, sort of vacant fucking smile, you know, like the lights are on but no one's home, yeah, kind of thing. 
Yeah, because they're supposed to be like sm less smart, just uh, obedient um, and deadly as well, apparently. Although they, they just seem a bit slow and stupid, really. Um, in contrast to the, the, the current film, uh, the one that came out uh, you know, this month. We should have some way of, of differentiating these two because we're talking about two <laughs> films. I think one's called Super Mario Brothers, and, but sometimes it's known as Super Mario Bros. the movie, and the other one is called The Super Mario Bros. movie. Yeah. So, so technically they don't have the exact same name, but they're close enough that we're, you know... Should we, should we call them the, then and now? This is the, I suppose it's the animated versus the Oh, okay, action. yeah. You know, not that these movies are anything really alike, you know. <laughs> I still think there is some quite a lot of uh, crossover. Well, I, I think that they both have a very thin plot. <laughs> well, the only uh, actually the only crossover I think there is is that they go through a fucking pipe and it sends them to a, a different dimension. Other than that, they're just completely different. Um, like the the animated movie does a really good job at like you know uh, representing the 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 franchise and the IP. Um, in in a, you know everything is just instantly recognizable and i think they tried very yes. hard to do that that's it's basically just an advert right for mario mm. before we watched it there was just tons of adverts for old mario games um nintendo switch that kind of stuff um and i think it's just a way to like bring money into the franchise well i mean obviously a lot of uh, video game movies are um but I think that yeah, it does does fairly well. It's a, a fairly in, like fairly good plot. It's it's a kids film, so it's not like it's not anything incredible. Um, it's very much like the plot of the latest Mario game, actually. Bowser's intentions in the film are very much like they are in the um, in the latest Mario game, Mario Odyssey, in that he wants to marry Princess Peach. Um, and I'm not sure how much of that was true in the earlier games. I don't think he was. He was just look, very early Mario games were of uh, you know in that generation where there wasn't really much of a, a storyline to a game. You just played it, um, and they you know like Sonic the Hedgehog, it just gave you like this is a bad guy. He's kidnapping animals or something. You've got to stop him. Um, right. And ba Bowser was just you right, know so... kidnapping the princess and putting her in a castle, and then you went and got her out of the castle, right? I mean, I guess it was kind of implied that he was kidnapping him, maybe because he was in love with her. But, but I wanted to talk here about this. Really speaks to sort of the the ad hoc nature of, of the way these things have developed, which I, I wanted to talk about a bit. And I think that this is this is why it got so weird, especially with the live action movie. The character itself was created. So, so I I recently seen this uh, video, this YouTube video by JJ McCulloch, which was really good about the origins of Mario, and essentially. Popeye was uh, a, a cartoon character that was just a just a one-off character originally, but then became like really famous in the 1920s. And then the Popeye character became really famous in Japan, and it got licensed by Nintendo, and they made like playing card games and Popeye brand ramen flavoring from it. And then they started developing a video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if they did, but it'd be good if they did. Yeah. I, I mean, that's that's the obvious way that uh, the marketing should go, surely. Yeah. Um, and then like, 1981, they were going to release um, like one of their first major video games, and it was going to be a Popeye game. And then the the owners of the pop of Popeye like pulled it at the last minute, so they had to come up with something. They'd already developed most of the game, but they had to just come up with like generic characters. So they came up with it was going to be. Um, Bluto, the like, Popeye's enemy, was going to be the bad guy, and Popeye was going to be the main character. So they came up with like a big sort of King Kong esque monkey and called it Donkey Kong. And this character that they didn't even have a name for, but they, but it was recognizably like the earliest conception of Mario. And basically everything about the way that they designed him was generic, but also limited by the fact that they only had like a tiny number of pixels to do the entire character and all his movements with. So everything like the the way his face is, the way the, the way he's got a hat, the way he's wearing overalls, it's in order to be able to show this this as an actual sort of person and be able to you know show it moving and animate it with just a few pixels as best possible. And it didn't have a name at the time; it was just called Jumpman. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, so it was only it was only named Mario later. Like so, after it had become kind of popular, they added the name Mario, which supposedly was because the um, Nintendo had this uh, employee in in Seattle that, uh, or someone they worked with in Seattle called Mario. Right. And they just named it after him, just on a whim, or did he? Did they owe him something? Kind did... of. I think kind of on a whim, and then it sort of it sort of stuck, and then and then because. Because they'd already designed the character with like a mustache, and like that was like an Italian American stereotype, and Mario just kind of fit. They kept just adding on details, a bit <laughs> like the the thing of a bit a bit like the fucking Wallace and Gromit thing of building the train track as they're going along it on the train. You yeah. know, they just oh, and, and also he's Italian, and also he, you know, and just adding these extra details, which is why it gets really squiffy by the time you get to the film. Uh, I mean, I think the thing about Mario is. Uh, it's not necessarily the um, the lore of the the character and what's like going on around him, and you know, it's the the characters are so recognisable, and I think you know, as you said, like making that character a certain way just so it could be animated. I think the way they evolved it and made it so recognisable, and all the other characters really recognisable, but also on top of that. The fact that all the games have been fantastic, like the old games were fantastic. They, you know, the modern games are completely like game changing. Uh, I've played, I've played quite a lot of them. So games like uh, Mario Gal- Super Mario Galaxy, you could run around the whole like platform you were on. It was like a like planets, and the camera would follow you around. It's just a really unique way of um, like navigating the map. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey is the same. You've got this hat that you throw and you can do all sorts of tricks with it. And it's just like, it's so fluid. Nintendo are so good at making like their their own games. Uh, they spend such a long time, things like Zelda and Mario. Um, that Yeah, I think that's the main drawing of Mario really is that it's it's just a really fun game to play. And all the characters are just, you know, just pop out and you can... You know, if you see a picture of Mario or characters from Mario, most of them people will recognize because they're just easy to recognize, right? The live action movie throws a lot of that goodwill (laughs) away. For example, the fact that it's like an hour and 40 minutes and the uh, Mario and Luigi characters don't don't appear in like the, the iconic sort of red and green overalls until like, I think, 66 minutes in. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like I, that that's the, that you know that's the, the like you know visually that's the one thing that should have been you know almost from the start and i think and i think then they're they're only they only appear like that for you know a very short amount of the of the entire film yeah like other, other things from it that the we've talked about the goombas how they look nothing like the goombas there's ve- very little cooper you know just looks like a weird man basically <laughs> he looks like a greasy he looks man like a, a, a strange greasy man yeah you know um one of the few things that I did think actually looked like, and it's not a, a thing that's very big in the games, but it does appear, is the bomb. Oh yeah, yeah, the little thing. Yeah, that's like the. Yeah. I think of all everything that's in it, that's the only thing that's recognizable as Mario. If you were to switch all the names of the characters and the the name of the film around, right, it would just just be a different, weird '90s like dystopian Mad Max esque film, wouldn't it? It's almost a shame that they didn't just do this. Basically, change the names of the characters and forget that it was a Super Mario Brothers movie at all, because you basically could just do that, and it it wouldn't be recognizably to do with Mario Brothers, um, yeah. especially not it was conceived at the time. Which speaks to the fact that uh, apparently Bob Hoskins didn't know that this was based on a game <laughs> until he was until he was he was filming it, and his his son asked him what he was working on, and when he told him the title, his son showed him it on the Nintendo system that he had. But up right. until that point, he didn't realize that it was based on a game at all. Well, that's, I mean, I, I suppose back then it was less fleshed out, right? The, the 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 whole Mario universe, a lot of it came when, once the 3D games started coming out. I think the whole Bowser um, is in love with Peach came from the, I think there's a Mario RPG game. And that's where they introduced that um, motive for him. Before then, it was just that she kidna- he kidnapped her because she's like the princess and that's it so yeah I'm, I'm not sure how much of that existed before that movie was was written um but i think bob, bob hoskins is fantastic in it he's in who Fr- who framed roger rabbit as well right that came out a few years after yeah um 
I think is before. A, I think a few years before. Was it before? Right. Okay. Which is a much better film. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> it is a, it's a, an infinitely better film. Yeah, and yeah, he's a good actor. I mean, I think Dennis Hopper's a good actor. I don't know if he's great in this film. So I think we can talk about how much of an absolute shit show the the live action film the the filming process was. Um, so the, a lot of the actors and a lot of the people involved have commented on it. Uh, apparently, they were just drunk. They just they, <laughs> they realized Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. So apparently, they they realized like pretty early into the the filming of the movie that it was just gonna turn out shit, and they <laughs> they were just like, oh fuck it. So we're just gonna get fucking drunk uh, through through most of it, you know? Right. So they're actually and... drunk in the film. Uh, I think that they they were drunk on set most of the time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Or, or a lot, a lot of the time, which led to a lot of a lot of injuries, which uh, right. led to a lot of like mishaps and injuries, um, in, including um, Bob Hoskins apparently got uh, stabbed, electrocuted, and um, he got his his uh, finger slammed in the van's door <laughs> during the the chase scene. And completely broken. And then for the rest of the film, he's wearing a cast that was painted pink to look like his hand. Right. I would have to rewatch this to see if I can spot any any drunken shenanigans because I don't I don't remember seeing anything that. I mean, it's, it's such a weird, like, all over the place film that I, I guess it, it kind of just blends in with the overall madness of the whole uh, plot. And it's also like really, it's pretty fast paced, right? There's, there's not a lot of downtime or, um, or anything like that. It's just constant, like, mad shenanigans all the way through. Sure. Well, I mean, the thing is, when you say fast-paced, that almost sounds like a compliment. <laughs> well, yeah, for lack of any character development or, like, fleshing out of the plot. Um, a- a- yeah, anything. Or or even spending, yeah, spending any, any time getting to know the characters, really, even. Yeah, like, you characters know? just appear and then they're they're gone and you know um it's just yeah it's just manic but um speaking of the cast what did you think of the cast for the animated show okay so uh obviously uh i think jack black was uh amazing (laughs) um and i think i think that the probably the best probably the best thing about this movie was uh the jack black peach song you know he's playing the <laughs> you know the piano yeah. i think that was that was literally probably the best thing in this movie and it, it is really good you know and because i'd gone in and i'd looked i'd glanced at the cast list um but maybe i was a bit drunk or something and then i, I was rushing to go to get to the cinema on time because i didn't want to miss the start i didn't have time to look at it again and then i got in and i was hearing jack black and i was like oh who I know that voice. Who is that? And I, and it's, and especially like during that song, like I realized who it was during that song. But until I realized who it was, I thought it might have been Meatloaf. <laughs> um, Meatloaf's dead, man. Um... Right. Yeah. And then I realized, hang on, it can't be Meatloaf. He's dead. <laughs> like... They've resurrected him for the film. Zombie Meatloaf as Bowser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They've got him on. They've got him on like some weird life support or something. Yeah. Uh, like a head in a jar, like in Future Armor. So he's he's good. I I thought um, I thought Seth Rogen was good. I thought everyone was was like at least okay, um, you know, o- okay to good, with both the the live action versus the animated film. The main thing I think really is that the 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 live action film took a lot of risks and basically none of them paid off. <laughs> and whereas the the animated one played it super safe with everything and spent a lot of money and just did it in a kind of soulless by the numbers way but you know also with quite a lot of attention to detail and you know made it quite good you know but didn't take any risk you know it's it's good in a boring way and that's that's represented by the fact that um that they had you know a cast of bankable stars you know you know Chris Pratt Jack Black you know Seth Rogen they're all, they're all like you know, bankable names. Whereas I don't think that they're good actors, Bob Hoskins and Dennis Hopper, not that these performances are, are their best, but you know, they, they're good actors, but they weren't even in 1993. I don't think they were like bankable stars exactly. Yeah. So I, I'm, I mean, this is almost like, um, 
what Disney did for a time, isn't it? Where they, they just have like superstars in their films to draw more audiences. Like, um, mm. yeah, so Robin Williams, I think that was one, I think that was maybe the first instance of them having like a big superstar on their poster to draw more people in. Um, but yeah, they did that for a time. And I think, yeah, that, that it, it works, right? It was a big talking point online, the, the cast for the animated film. Um, Chris Pratt. Chris, Chris Pratt. It sounds like Chris <laughs> what, what you Pratt. Say, wait, I was just thinking, I, I would just say you say it like, it sounds like Chris Pratt. Like, <laughs> like, like, like something you get at a barbecue in some fucking post-apocalyptic future where there's no other form of meat left. Ah, oh, Chris Pratt! Get your Chris Pratt here! I'm, I'm pretty sure they had some, some Chris Pratt in the, uh, in the live-action one. That's what they were eating on the yeah, ground. I'm, sure they did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, prophetic, perhaps. perhaps Maybe, they, yeah. That's, that's uh... why they chose him. So it's a call yeah. back to the uh, live action scene. It's one of those Easter eggs you yeah. don't usually see. Um, right, yeah, yeah. The fact that it's got Chris Pratt in, Chris, Chris Pratt in it. Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, but, uh, I think he was fine in it. Like, I think he was pretty good. Well, there was people debating, like, they saw some of the trailers and stuff, and they were like, oh, he's not doing the Mario voice. His Mario voice is awful. He's not doing the, let's go, it's a me, that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. So I think that, that, that they made a pretty canny decision here that that, that would get, old. while it's fine for a video game and stuff, it would get pretty old pretty fast, exactly. Yeah. And they also, they also sort of dealt with that uh, very early on in the movie and sort of explained it in a way that was like, maybe a little bit of a cheap but satisfactory yeah yeah i can imagine that movie would be very hard to watch if all the way through mario and Lu- luigi were like oh, what's the wrong a princess of peach like everything it just yeah. be it just be like unbearable um like you say it works in a video game because it's only you know you get a little voice line every every once in a while um mario's one of those sort of more silent characters who only says a few things so having him, Woo-hoo! yeah, Woo-hoo! for example, um, yeah, yeah, very much like uh, Link in Legend of Zelda, who notoriously doesn't speak at all, just makes like grunts and stuff like that when it rolls around. So yeah, but I don't know, Jack Jack Black in in the film was I, I I did really like him, but I kind of expected a bit less Jack Blackism, if you know what I mean. Um, I. I when he started doing that song, I'm like, this is so Jack Black. It's just like, it's what he does. It's the sort of stuff he does in interviews and stuff. Have you seen it? He does like a little interview and he whips out like a little plastic kid's toy saxophone and starts like playing it and dancing around. And I kind of expected them to tone, tone that bit of him down. But at the same time, I'm surprised. I'm glad that they didn't. Um, I suppose it, it plays it plays into the fact that you know he is like a big superstar, and um, people are coming to see it not just for the, you know, Mario, but for the, the cast that's in it. I always find Seth Rogen's Seth Rogen-y all the time as well. Even when it's just his voice, it's like it's, yeah, yeah, it's the laugh in did it. He, uh, did, he, did he do that? Like, did, yeah, I was just gonna say, did he do the laugh in it? I think he yeah, did. he does it all the time. That was pretty, that was pretty good actually. Do, do it again. Uh, this is a film yeah. uh, I watched recently where he's in it. Um, it might even have been that Chipmunks, uh, Chippendale one. Um, he's in it as a character, and he like it's got loads of other Disney like IP in it and stuff. And the character he plays like meets up with loads of other characters that he's played, and they're all talking, and it's just like really weird. Um, just like oh, loads of characters played by too. Seth Rogen all talking at the same time. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's just it is very recognizable. I think he just does like he just does his voice, right? Um, yeah, he always sounds a bit stoned. Yeah, well, I feel like Chris Chris Crisp Crisp Rat um, <laughs> uh, did a you know he changed his voice a little bit to to make it more like Brooklyn uh, Italian. Um, but yeah, not, and, not... and I also I, it wasn't distracting at all because because I don't I don't really know what Chris 
Chris Pratt sang. You can't say it without. It's, it. it's hard to say his name. Now. I've never noticed that before, but it was just the, when you said it earlier. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't say his name now. But sounding in my head like Chris, Chris Pratt. Oh, sorry, Chris Pratt. <clears throat> Chris P. Let's call him Chris P. Chris P. <laughs> that feels worse. That's worse, yeah. Chris P. <laughs> All right, I need to get back get get back together. Um <laughs> So when Chrissy Yeah, Chris. He's in um he's Star Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy, so he's in in the Avengers sort of films and stuff, and that's where I think I recognise him most from, because I did quite quite like the Guardians of the the Galaxy films. I thought they were fun. So, but yeah, yeah. So he's he's in that. What else is he in? He's in other. He's in loads of other stuff as well. Um, mm. Yeah, people were poking fun at his Mario voice, saying that there was like memes of um, what's what's that guy in um, the Simpsons called the. Uh, the, it's like Arnie, basically, in The Simpsons. Oh, Rainier Wolf, Wolfcastle. Wolfcastle, yeah. Um, yep. And there's that <laughs> um, up, up and up and at him, and he's like up and at them. <laughs> up and at them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. there was like a yeah when they're doing the the radioactive man movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there's like a meme of Chris 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 Pratt. Um, <laughs> And and the the guys going up and rat them, <laughs> up and rat them. <laughs> oh man, up and rat them. Um, but yeah, so it's Chris Chris Pratt and uh, the director's going, no, oh, let's a go, and he's just saying, let us go, and uh, yeah, it's just I think it's quite a good comparison. <laughs> right. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I can see why in the trailers and stuff, uh, the voices and much like the character and like you said it makes sense that it would just become very tiring to listen to they'd either need to make him a fairly taciturn character um or they or which then it, there's not much chance to like really you know it, it give him much personality or anything yeah or or they need the voice like they did so i think i think in fairness that they probably they probably made the right call on that one what do you think um, the likelihood of a, a sequel to uh, to to the modern uh, animated one would be? I think it's I think it's going to be pretty likely because uh, it's already made nearly four times its budget, yeah. and that's just in box office sales. And as we've kind of said, it's it's kind of an advert for the entire franchise. So even if it even if it weren't massively prof- profitable in, at the box office, which it is, it'd probably be you know it'd probably be worth their while to, to release a sequel, even if it didn't do much more than break even. Uh, plus apparently um, there's, they've had, you know, several of the, several of the actors involved have, have expressed interest in it. Um, I'd be surprised if there wasn't some kind of sequel. Um, yeah. I think Char- Charlie Day, who um, I mainly know from it's only, uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. He said that he'd, he'd want to do maybe a, a Luigi sequel. There's the thing uh, at the end, which I actually walked out, but it, there was apparently a post-credit sequence where you know a character that was notable, uh, you know, notable by his absence, Yoshi. Right. Was, uh, you kind of see see an egg in the cr- in the post-credit sequence, which is yeah. him being hatched potentially. I, I think I, I do remember seeing a bunch of Yoshi's like look over as they pass, but it's not. Yeah, it's not in the. You, you see it. Yeah, you see a bunch of dinosaurs that I think they're various colors and they're clearly the same species as Yoshi. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. It would probably they are likely to do another one. Um, there was um, a bit of a, a a meme going around as well about tying in the Nintendo franchises. Like Detective Pikachu came out a couple of years back, and that was actually a surprisingly like good film. Oh. Uh, and then there was so the Mario movies come out and. You know, people were speculating that maybe they'd have like post-credit scenes tying them all together, and there'd be a, a what's it called, S- Super Smash, like an NCU, yeah, an Nintendo, an NCU, an Nintendo Cinematic Universe. <laughs> but yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if I like that idea. You know, like I mean, Pokemon's fine, Mario's fine. They're not really 
set in the same universe for me. You know, I don't like. Well, there's um there's a game called Super Smash Brothers, which is a uh, uh it's basically like all of Nintendo's intellectual property in a beat 'em up game yeah. where. Yeah, which is fine in, in a game, like in, in a beat 'em up game, which I, I always, I was like, I've, I've not played it much, but I've seen it a bit. And I always feel like it's, it's a bit of um, a bit tongue in cheek, you know, like <laughs> yeah. these characters wouldn't, wouldn't ever be in the same, you know, same s- scenario in the same world. And if they were, they probably wouldn't be beating each other up like that. You know, I, I just so really, that's, fi- that's fine. But I think trying to make a narrative around these, these, these very disparate characters from quite, you know, quite different worlds. I mean, I could, I could totally see it happening. I just don't think it should. <laughs> I just want to see Kirby in a film. Yeah, the little Kirby. Pink, the pink yeah, round the pink, thing. Yeah, the pink thing. It's like the marshmallow looking it's thing. It's like two two inches big or something as well. It's like really tiny. Um, <laughs> like I don't know. It's like two right, that, or four inches. That versus a Charizard. <laughs> the thing is that uh, K- Kirby is like, um, as far as like video game lore goes. Kirby is like uh, it's it's basically like an eldritch horror, right? Um, is it? It's it's this little pink invincible blob that can like fly and devours infinite amount of stuff, and is like insanely powerful for its size. I mean, basically in the games, it goes around and like destroys God, right? That's what the fucking games are about. Um, so Jesus, yeah. so. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's it's like it's like beyond. It's like it, 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 trans-dimensional. It can eat time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's uh, yeah, it's yeah. just this immortal pink little jelly bean motherfucker that will devour you and your entire universe if it gets pissed off because you stole its cake. So okay, so 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 now now I think we should we should be working on ideas. I think we should spend the rest of this podcast working on ideas for. Uh, for our, our our movie that's set in the NCU, the <laughs> Nintendo Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Okay. So so let's say Ash Ash from Pokemon has has grown up, and he's uh he's moved to he's moved to New York and he's 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 studying as an exchange student in New York whilst training Pokemon on the side, and then he runs into the Mario Brothers. Yeah. In a bar. <laughs> what's a they... Mario Mario exists in a world where Pokemon exist? Yeah, presumably it would have to. I feel Wouldn't like it... you could have something like you you would have uh Kirby um like I don't know, just rips a, a, a hole in like reality <laughs> and everyone's realities converge. Um Okay. <laughs> Or maybe we just go with the fact that they. No, I think that's better actually. Yeah, and they have to work to patch up the the whole ripped in the fabric of space time by Kirby. Yeah. Uh, they have to they have to work together. I'm trying to think of other Nintendo um, uh, characters that we could in, in, incorporate. Uh, Doctor Mario. Doctor Mario, yeah. All the different Marios, yeah. Be like that. Different Mario. There's that Doctor Strange film, isn't there, where there's like apparently. Yeah, in an infinite number of parallel realities, and there's like a different one in each. So you have Doctor Mario. Okay. Would Wario be? Because I, I was going to say actually, he's he's another character that was notable by his absence. I thought from either yeah. movie. I, I don't know if I don't know if he he, he he'd been invented. I was going to say, but conceived of. Let's say <laughs> when the, the live action movie came out. But yeah, they so definitely what, need to have them. Maybe like it. one alternate version. Wario and Waluigi. Wah! In it, um, those two are some of the, the funniest characters in that. Who would you cast as them? So oh. We've got Chris Bratt, obviously, as, as the main Mario, and um, you know, Charlie Day. I feel like you'd have um, Dwayne Johnson as Kirby, <laughs> <laughs> just his head, though, um, just his head, yeah, just yeah, and then like CGI little limbs on it. So it's 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 Kirby, Kirby's body with uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson's face. Uh, <laughs> right. doing, he does that like eyebrow thing, doesn't he? You know, where he lifts one <laughs> eyebrow. Up. Can you smell what Kirby's cooking? <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's yeah, Dwayne Johnson as uh, Kirby. We've got. Oh, I'm trying to think. 
what's his name now? Um, the guy from like Matilda and It's Always Sunny and. I was Danny thinking, DeVito. Yeah, I was thinking Danny DeVito was Wario. So I'm thinking back to his Penguin days and and thinking, yeah, he can play like a creepy, like yeah, weird guy. Uh, who? Would... Yeah, yeah. So Waluigi's like like a k- kind of gangly, also. Yeah, I. Do you know? Do you know who I was just thinking of for Waluigi? Um, I don't know the actor's name, but um. Gabe from the American Office. He'd be, he'd be perfect for. He's got like the perf, He's incredibly gangly, and yeah, he's got the the right physicality. But I, I, if it was if it was going to be an animated movie, or would it be mixed? Would it would it be like <laughs> a mixed, you know, live action with with animation? Like, because if they're all from different worlds, there probably would be some live action versions of Mario. That that'd be the Bob Hoskins one. They'd they'd re they'd have to reanimate Bob Hoskins. <laughs> so he yeah. one of the versions of Mario. It'd be the Chris Bratt Mario. It'd be the Chris the, Bratt Mario. The, 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 the... <laughs> no, that'd be the one. That, I, well, I think it'd be fucking hilarious if there was cr- the the Mario that is Chris Chris Pratt, and then like a crispy rat Mario. So you got a Chris Chris Bratt Mario and crispy rat Mario. Like, oh, like where he puts on he puts on the Chris Bratt suit, like the the crispy rat suit, like. This is sounding like um, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. The more I think about it, just all right, these... where all the different Spider-Men meet each other. Yeah, maybe there's like a, I don't know. Would there be like multiple Kirby's as well? Um, I think there's only one Kirby. Yeah, I think it... there's only Kirby. Kirby is the Alpha and Omega. <laughs> just this one creature that exists across all like realities. Um, yeah, be- yeah, beyond space and time. So ha- ha- we'd have different Bowsers as well, wouldn't we? So we've got Jack Black. Yeah, we'd have a bunch of different Bowsers, yeah. Um, Meatloaf Bowser. A Meatloaf, well, I, yeah, Meatloaf Bowser. Um, I was going to say, how about a Jeremy Irons Bowser? <laughs> well, that's what they should do for the sequel. Instead of getting just like 10 actors in, just hire all of Hollywood and have everyone, <laughs> everyone in it. Everyone gets like two seconds of dialogue each. Um, right, Tom, yeah, Tom Cruise yeah. Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> I I think Tom Tom Cruise would be would be Luigi, no? I was just and, thinking and they Luigi's could have been... they could have the interview with it with like Tom Cruise Bowser, like an interview of him talking about Peach, and he could do that whole thing where he starts like jumping on the he sofa. Jumps on the sofa, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and he's just like, yeah, oh. brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, meanwhile, meanwhile, Peach is, just isn't into him. Yeah, yeah. Because um, he's a fucking weird, like Scientology Bowser. Um, Scientology <laughs> Bowser. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that's that's like that's how he, <laughs> he wants to get the star. You've got to you've got to work your way up the ranks of Scientology to get the star. Yeah. The superstar. I, I think he's already at the top in his Tom Cruise. He's like the the king of Scientology. Uh, yeah, they've officially crowned him last year. <laughs> Tom Cruise, king of Scientology. Um, who else could there be? Oh, there's so many, so many fantastic actors. You, you'd have Will Smith as uh, Luigi. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just, um, when he shows up with the other, other Luigi's, like the uh, original one, I can't remember his name now. Um, but the original one shows up and he goes, you know, the difference between me and you, I make this look good and puts on some shades like in Men in Black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a throwback <laughs> to every fucking yeah. film like anyone's ever been in as well. Yeah, just chaotic like throwback shit. <laughs> I'm sure it'd do really well. Let's pitch it, man. Yeah, yeah, I think this is I think this is what, what's going to make us our fortune, you know? Yeah. Do you know what people like? They like nostalgia. How about we make a film? How about how about um, I was I was I was gonna say Patrick Stewart as uh not King Kong, but like Donkey Kong's father. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um Yeah, we've got Robert Downey Jr. in there as well. Um As who? Toad. <laughs> a Toad. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to have Johnny Depp in as a Mario as well. As one of the Mario's, yeah? yeah, not as Luigi. Yeah, just 
just as Mario. Pirate Mario. Pirate Mario, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there a Pirate Mario? I don't know. Maybe. There is in this. Right, <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually want to talk about, about some of the potential castings that, that almost might have been from the live action one. All right, yeah. So apparently uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger turned down the role of Cooper, of, of Bowser. Oh, that would have been really good. Um, I think I was um, almost thought you were going to say Mario. That would be amazing. It's of me. <laughs> it's not a tumor. It's not a Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> apparently there was also a version of the script which contained a cameo for Bruce Willis where he tunneled through the air ducts of Kid Cooper's <laughs> castle in a spoof of Die Hard. <laughs> Why? Why though? That's almost like one just... of the fucking things we just suggested then. Yeah, I know it is. I know it is. Yes, I know. It's, it's that, that level of fucking bullshit. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. That that would have been very weird. I mean, it wouldn't be out of sorts in that film. I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have thought, oh, that's weird in comparison to everything else. I'd have just thought, yeah, that's part of this film. Um, yeah. Um, Michael Keaton was also approached to play Cooper. Right, okay. Tom Hanks was considered for Luigi. <laughs> and D- Danny DeVito was originally meant to uh, direct and play Mario, or at one point he was offered the role of Mario and the director's position. And Dustin Hoffman expressed interest in playing Mario. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. David Hasselhoff as uh, Toad. <laughs> as Toad. David Hasselhoff yeah. as Toad. Yeah. <laughs> so, so however fucking weird this film is, you just said that it could have been infinitely weirder. Um, yes, I know. Oh, and the other one, the other one that was actually meant to play to, that they originally wanted for Toad was Tom Waits. Right. Okay. Who's Tom Waits? <laughs> I'll recognize. You don't know him. Tom Waits. Tom Waits. Tom Waits, the um, the, the the singer, the musician. Um, he's like he's mainly a musician. He's got like that really gravelly voice, and he does like really weird, weird sort of post blues, I guess you'd call it. And he was also he was also in the Imaginarium of Doctor Parnassus. He's acted in a bunch of stuff. He was in the Ballad of Buster Scrubs. Um, right, I'd recognize him if yeah, I saw um, him. But yeah, yeah, I mean he, he's awesome. I, I love Tom Waits. Tom... I'm surprised you don't know who he is. Tom Waits. Waits. W A I T S. Tom Waits. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you mean now. Yeah. So he would have been Toad. Yeah, they wanted they wanted him for Toad. Like it almost sounds like they wrote the the part of Toad with him in mind, and then they couldn't get him. Right. Okay. Could have had Jack Black was alive back then. <laughs> I was alive back then. Jack, Jack Black Black's was like, Jack Black was alive. <laughs> <laughs> right. What a stupid statement. Um, <laughs> so they could have used Jack Black. Jack Black would have. But it was 1993. When did uh, Tenacious think, D come? It was later think, than that, wasn't it? I think uh, mid to late 90s. I think late late 90s. I heard he used to like tour yes. with like Nirvana and stuff, though. I think he was a roadie for a while. Um, maybe. Right, okay. I might have just made that up. Well, he was uh, one of one of the first things that he was in, and it this this film probably came out about the same time. And I, I just remember seeing this; it was on TV once, and I was like channel hopping, and I was like, "What the fuck is that, Jack Black?" And it's one of the first movies he was ever in. It's the Never Ending Story Part Three, and he's like this no. weird fucking bull, like high school bully type thing in like a biker jacket, and like that's like bullying the main character. Right. And I, yeah. I think that that would have come out about 1993. And it was one of the yeah one of the early films that he was ever in. <laughs> that pissed me off. That film, Never Ending Story, because it fucking actually ends, and I just, you know, it's <laughs> so it's like a a Troy, a Troy McClure joke, isn't it? Oh, not a Troy McClure, <laughs> Lionel Hutz joke. Simpson, this is the most blatant case of fraudulent advertising since my suit against the film, The Never Ending Story. I mean, <laughs> it's too long anyway, so I don't know why I complained about that. Um. I just remember the horse sinking in uh, in the sadness swamp. Uh, 
and he's like yeah. trying to pull it out, pull his horse out. No, don't get sad. Don't get sad, horse. Stop being sad. It's like, well, you're fucking crying and screaming, man. Why are you not sinking? That's a scam. Is it just a, a horse sad in a swamp? It just sinks sad horses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's what it is. <laughs> it's a so- swamp of sadness, but only if you're a horse. Um, right. Yeah. It's just. It's just made. It's glue. It's made of glue, <laughs> and it's yeah. just. It's just one horse. One horse got so sad that it sucked itself down to glue. <laughs> so it sucked it to glue. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was so depressed it committed suicide by sucking itself into glue one day and it was just a puddle of glue, glue and then aside. another horse and it's 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 like sticky and it's got it gives out like bad you know bad vibes like a dementor or something bad horse vibes and yeah. and then and, and, and yeah bad horse vibes and then another horse got sucked in and it just kept amplifying and until it became an entire swamp of just <laughs> dead horse glue horse and that's the origin that's the origin of of that get out of the horse slop the horse don't no don't commit gluicide ah <laughs> gluicide <laughs> oh jesus <laughs> Yeah, man, that's uh, yeah, that's the that's what happens to horses though in the wild. That's why you never see them anymore. It's not because of cute humans, it's because that's of the... why you never see wild horses just <laughs> running through, just running through the suburbs. That's why you never see them. <laughs> right on the yeah, just running down the fucking M1. <laughs> um... <laughs> just, running, just running through council estates. Although you do see that sometimes, actually, don't you? Yeah, not wild ones, uh, unless you. No, yeah. not wild ones. Just yeah, just just feral ones, feral yeah. horses, loose horses. Yeah. Yeah, just, just like a fucking horse that just ran away from home. It was getting neglected. Yeah, just... vaping and it's <laughs> pregnant again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. <clears throat> um, if you're a horse and you live in an estate, that joke was not meant to offend you. It's only a hype, hypothetical. Right. Yeah. Please don't get depressed by it and gluicide yourself. <laughs> Glu- commit gluicide. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, shall we wrap things up here in a minute? Yeah, yeah. So, I think I enjoyed both of those films, like for very different reasons. I went to the cinema to watch the animated one uh, with my kids and and some other family, uh, and everyone enjoyed it. It was a nice time. It was very busy. There was lots of uh, other children and families around, uh, and there's lots of throwbacks in it to the video game. So, if you've played them, it it kind of you know, it's a bit of a nostalgia trip, and you, you're constantly seeing little references. Whereas the live-action one, uh, I enjoyed because it's just so fucking weird and out there. I didn't know what the hell was going on most of the time, and then um, I was kind of glad it was over. So there's that. Um... <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the highlight. Was when it was when it finished. <laughs> yeah, this, this story has what my, my favorite thing of all stories. An end. So you were, dis- you were disappointed by the never-ending story because it did end. Oh, no, hang on. I've confused myself there. <laughs> Wait, hang on, where, where are we? Who am I? <laughs> Don't commit gluicide. Um, so what did you <laughs> what did you think of the uh, the story, the, the films overall then? So this podcast is about the live-action 1993 Super Mario Brothers movie versus the 2023 current Super Mario Brothers movie. And I think that for me, the clear winner is the current uh, animated movie. Um, yeah. Not to say that it's a very good film. It's it's so, it's so a bit of a shameless cash grab, uh, but it's made sort of, it's entertaining. It's a fine way to, to while away an hour and a half, especially if you take the kids. It's fine. The music's good. Jack Black's a highlight. Uh, the plot's a bit thin. But there's and there's plenty and there's a lot of just like there's a lot of just like oh look at this it's from the video games check it out like without actually providing a joke or a comment on it you know um, but it's fine it's it's you know it hangs together okay I give it a six out of ten the like 1993 live action movie on the other hand is bad and unlike you I didn't even find it bad in an entertaining way I just found it bad in a bad way right okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So I can see that. Yeah, as as I think I mentioned, I I think that the 
Uh, the one thing I will give it some credit for is, you know, it took a lot of risks. Uh, unfortunately, none of them paid off. And unfortunately, uh, each, each each occasion, it just fell on its face. Um, <laughs> yeah. Where, whereas the, the current the current uh, movie just played it very safe uh, and spent a lot of money and had, you know, spent a lot of time. Um, and it ended up being passable. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to give the animated one a solid six out of 10. Whereas I'm going to give the, um, the live action one, uh, a generous three out of ten. Ah, uh, okay. So, I would have given it close at four or five out of ten, and I, I think I'm uh, about on par with you with the uh, the animated one at about a six. Um, I think it's okay. It does what it's supposed to do, but it's not. You know, I I, I probably won't bother rewatching it, um, or go out of my way to rewatch it. Uh, whereas, you know, there's plenty of other animated films that came out recently that I thought, like the new Puss in Boots movie, for for example, was really good. Um, and I'd rewatch that. And I'd rewatch Shrek, so. Uh, but not Mario. So, yeah, it's good for good for the audience, but. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, just briefly, did you, did you see it in 3D? No, no. Did you? Okay, so, yeah, because it was the only option here. And it didn't really add much. Um, right. Like, I also think I've, I've been to the cinema twice while I've been here and it, I've been to the same one and both the films that I've seen have been showing in 3D and I think maybe just the screen there's not very good for it or the glasses are a bit shit or something. It just, you know, it doesn't look great. Like, it's, um, you know, like it's in 3D but it doesn't seem to be very good 3D or something. Yeah, I, I've never found that at the cinema 3D quite as good as, like, the IMAX was. Um feel like the IMAX does it really well and it was designed for that kind of stuff whereas at the cinema it feels almost like there's still not worked out the technology enough um, I, I don't know maybe it's just me in my eyes but it always feels like it's just a little bit out of focus or just doesn't look right um, though I remember yeah, that, it, yeah that was pretty much my experience yeah yeah that was pretty much my experience so yeah, so if you're going to go see it, I, I wouldn't bother with the 3D, unless you're going to go to the IMAX, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, you, uh, if you're if you a fan of Mario, and you, uh, you've got kids, or even if you don't, just go watch it. Um, it's worth the watch. Uh, you don't necessarily need to go watch it at the cinema. You could just fucking pirate it, because I don't give a shit what happens, you know. We don't work, we don't work for the Nintendo, do we? No. It, I mean, they didn't reply to my fucking email when I asked them if they'd, they'd let us, they'd you know, sponsor you, us for this. Well, do you know who'd be a great casting for Mario and Luigi? Us! Yeah. It is me, Mario. <laughs> no, i got to be Mario, surely. You, 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 you'd be Luigi. Oh, why? Because I'm a coward, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've, I've got to, I've got to grow my, I've got to grow my, my, uh, my pedo mustache in anyway. So <laughs> it's going to be a while till, till we audition. We can work out which of us will be which. Yeah. Now you can be. Um, I'm trying to think now. Yoshi. Yoshi's actually my Japanese name. <laughs> but yeah, with that, let's uh, let's wrap things up. And yeah, thank you for joining us today on the podcast you can check us out uh we've got a youtube channel we post some shorts on probably going to start putting some uh full episodes up there soon as well uh check us out on patreon if you want to support for bonus content and early access um you can join us on discord uh email any questions or potential future topics to jj.hm.podcast at gmail.com um, or you can check us out on Twitter, but it's not likely that we'll be active because fuck Twitter. Hey, don't say that, man. The Twitter police might get you. Oh, wait, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's probably got a satellite over my house watching me. That's why I furiously masturbate at the window every night. <laughs> that's, why you, that's why you wank at it. Yes. Yes, I... <laughs> Make sure it's the right directionality. Prop myself up with chairs and pillows and stuff, just so you can get a full, uh, full view of my, uh, of my tent. 
<laughs> a satellite view, a satellite image of the tent. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, cool. And with that, um, let's go. Da 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 da. Boom. Let, let's a fuck off. <clears throat> <laughs> um, bye. Everyone.